Meet the black pig. This special porker is too good to be turned into bacon and sausages. Instead, he'll become one of the finest delicacies money can buy. The Culatello dry cured ham. This expensive delicacy begins life in the Po River Valley in northern Italy, an area famous for its farming and agriculture. The black pig leads a very pampered lifestyle. By normal pig standards, it could be called luxurious. If he was going to become sausages, he'd be stuck in a pen-eating processed feed. But these guys get to roam around fields of sweet corn, eating as much as they can find. Unfortunately for the pigs, though, as soon as they get heavier than 150 kilos, it's time for the chop. Once the animal has been butchered, the process of dry curing can begin. Unlike wafer-thin ham, the culatello is considered a delicacy, so the butcher selects only the best cuts of meat. The first stage is to prepare the meat. The butcher performs some quick liposuction and trims away a layer of excess lard. He won't remove all of it, though, as some is needed to help the drying process. The particular cut of meat he uses is very fragile, so he has to tie it up to help it survive the long drying process. Next comes salt, and plenty of it. To cure the ham, it's wrapped in a thick layer which draws moisture out of the meat and adds to the final taste. The butcher also uses peppercorns to enhance the flavor. And in the tradition of all good recipes, he also splashes plenty of wine over the meat. The first stage is complete, and he will now leave it on the side to rest for about a week. The meat will slowly turn red as it sits in a cool room out of the sun. Italian cooking and red wine seem to go hand in hand. And during this week, the butcher will massage the meat once a day with more wine and garlic to give it extra flavor. The next stage is a protective covering. The meat will be wrapped in the pig's own bladder, which may sound nasty, but this is a traditional recipe and it does do the job well. The bladder is sewn up tightly, but then he fills it full of holes. If he left it airtight, none of the moisture could escape and the ham wouldn't be dry cured. Finally, the meat is tied up. This isn't to stop it escaping, but it gives the culatello ham its traditional pear shape. And that is all the butcher has to do for the time being. Now it's time for the humid Italian air to take over the job. This luxury ham takes a few months to dry out, but it doesn't go off because of all the salt it's been wrapped in. However, it's a different story during the ripening process. In the whole of Italy, there are only eight villages where culatello hams can be made. That's because these are the only villages which have the right climate to grow the right mold that the process needs. That's right, mold. Once the ham has been hung in the ripening room, it's exposed to the particular mold spores that grow on damp walls in these villages. The warm, humid air is just right for this particular mold to grow. It attaches itself to the external bladder and releases enzymes into the meat inside. These enzymes then break down proteins and fats within the ham to help give it its unique and delicious flavor. The combination of the humid air, the mold and the long curing process give culatello a unique taste which has never been properly reproduced artificially. The mass production of Parma ham works in a similar way, but it's done on a huge scale and much faster because of demand. This is why Parma ham is far cheaper and more readily available in supermarkets than the culatello. Once the ham has reached the end of its curing process, the farmer can remove it from the ripening room and clean it up. Moldy ham doesn't sell particularly well. 
With all the spores cleaned off, the butcher can test the meat's firmness by flicking it with his forefinger. His expert ear can tell a good ham from an unripe one. If it passes the test, the butcher will remove the string bag and open up the bladder to see how well the meat has matured. Sometimes the malt has penetrated inside the bladder, so the butcher will use a splash of whatever wine he has handy to clean off any unwanted spores. At last, he can sit back and enjoy the fruits of his labor. And if you fancy trying one of the most expensive hams in the world, you'll need about 400 pounds and a very upmarket delicatessen, because you won't find this in your local supermarket.